In this video, the FPL have revealed player prices for teams like Arsenal, Brighton, Brentford, Leeds, and of course, Manchester City. So we're going to go over what this means for our FPL sides and how this may shape the way the game is played this season. All of that coming up next. <laughs> What the flock is going on and welcome to FPL Today. Thank you for joining me for this video about the player price reveals that were released on Friday. Now, there's probably going to be some more released as well, and we'll try to cover that here on this channel as well. And we are going to go over all of the players revealed so far from Friday. And we're doing it with the help of Fantasy Football Hub's Twitter page, who are making a thread where every single player price reveal is put into one place. So go and follow them on Twitter. And also, if you want fixture tickers, Optus stats, and more like articles from some of the best fantasy football managers in the game, make sure to check out Fantasy Football Hub with the link in the description down below. It's where I get most of my stats and fixture tickers from. So make sure to check them out. And let's get into Arsenal first and stay tuned to the end of the video for Manchester City. Or if you want, fast forward to the end if you only care about these two clubs. However, Arsenal, we've got the player price reveals. And as we can see, Arsenal look like they could offer us some great value. Last season, they almost got a Champions League place. And if they continue to improve on last season's performance, we could see some great budget players from this side who, of course, are going to be top half of the table. At least you'd imagine so and challenging for that Champions League place and European places. Ramsdale in goal at 5 million to start off with. That seems underpriced to me because Arsenal are definitely capable of clean sheets ever since they improved their defence last season. Speaking of defence, Tommy Yasu and Ben White at 4.5 million look great value. And Tierney, if he is fit, is very capable of attacking returns at 5 million as well. So some great budget options in goalkeeper and defence. And it continues on into the midfield with the likes of Smithrow and Martinelli at £6 million apiece. If either of them look like they're nailed on, that's an absolute bargain in my eyes. And Odegaard at £6.5 million isn't much worse. I think Odegaard will be a main player on the side and £6.5 million for a player that's going to play most of Arsenal's games, I imagine, is a fantastic price. Saka at £8 million might be a little bit too much, but his form from last season does justify this. And if he does continue to grow as a player, I do actually believe Saka could be worth that £8 million price tag too. And then as far as up front, Nketiah at £7 million, You'll get the general gist of this as we go through, but I think potentially forwards have been overpriced compared to midfielders and defenders, potentially pushing us towards the likes of 4-5-1 or 5-4-1, where all the value is really in midfield and defence, but we'll see with more player price reveals as they are released. Of course, Gabriel Jesus hasn't been revealed, probably because of the transfer between the two clubs, so we don't know Gabriel Jesus' price just yet. But Nketiah at 7 million feels a little bit too expensive for my liking. We move on to Brentford. And as you can see again, 4.5 million for Rea. I think that is a great budget shout for a goalkeeper if you don't want to push yourself up to that 5 million pound price. We've also got defenders here at 4.5 million as well. The likes of Henry, Pinnock, Jansen, all potential options to put into your defence if you're not going for Rea and you need a bench player who is likely to be a starter and can come off the bench if someone you have in your starting 11 isn't playing. As far as it goes for midfield, I personally wouldn't know which midfielder to go for 100%, but Wiesa did have a great end to his season. So at 5.5 million, Wiesa could be a decent shout as well. We're waiting to see where Christian Eriksen goes, of course, so we don't know Christian Eriksen's price. That hasn't been revealed, but that could be a big factor on if you go for a Brentford midfielder and then up front we've got Tony at 7 million and then Buemo is a forward this season at 6 million now Tony 7 million is maybe the striker that will get into my side at around that price range of 7 to 8 million because I feel like he grew into the Premier League especially near the end of last season I think he could continue to improve so I'll be keeping a close eye on Brentford if I don't go with Tony at the very beginning so I think some fair prices there but I'm not too sure about their midfield, but it does offer some value with those 5.5 million price tags. We move on to Brighton, and again, Sanchez, 4.5 million. That's potential there for Sanchez and 
Brentford's keeper Raya to be your two starting goalkeepers. You may not get perfect rotation, but those are two good value goalkeepers, only seeing you spend £9 million on your goalkeepers, giving you £91 million to spend on the rest of your side. Lamptey, if he can stay fit and in the side at £4.5 million, is a very good price, so I'll be looking to see if he is nailed on and looking fit. Trossard at 6.5 million, maybe just a little bit too expensive for my liking. And you do have some other options in the field there, but I think really the value for Brighton is in their defence, unless something changes up front. And maybe Undav is the player to do that. I have unfortunately overlooked Undav because he did join Brighton in the January transfer window, so he wasn't put into some of the videos I've done about forwards and new players to the league. But Undav, if he does hit the ground running, could change things for Brighton. And Undav would be one I'd be interested in if he shows any form at 5.5 million because I'm going to probably be looking for value up front and maybe Undav could be that player. We move on to Leeds United and Meslier, 4.5 million as well. And of course, Jesse March has improved that Leeds defence. But FPL, you've ruined it for me. I was so looking forward to Rasmus Christensen in my side. You know, sometimes you just see a player join the Premier League and you think, yes. I'm looking forward to having that guy in my team at that 4.5 million price for a defender. And Christensen has been priced at 5 million. They've seen his attacking output from last season at Red Bull Salzburg. So unfortunately, don't think Christensen's going to be in my side. Now, there's still a chance he does prove good value for that 5 million. But I don't think I can take the risk off of the start of the season with that. Now he's been priced 0.5 million more than I thought he would. In midfield, we have players that sometimes have great game weeks, but unfortunately haven't really ever shown consistency. Harrison definitely has had some big game weeks, and he's been priced at 6 million, as well as James and Rodrigo. Aronson from Red Bull Salzburg at 5.5 million, and Rocker at 5. Now, Rocker I could be interested in because I believe he would be a starter at Leeds, especially with Calvin Phillips moving to Manchester City. If he is a starter and I need a bench midfielder, then Rocker could be the person I look towards. He did have some good seasons at Espanyol before he joined Bayern Munich. So Rocker could be someone I see in my starting squad, but he probably wouldn't be in the starting 11. And then up front, we've got Bamford at 7.5 million. Now, if Bamford returned to some of the form from not last season, but the season before, Bamford at 7.5 million could be a very good price, but we'll have to wait and see, unfortunately, because. We all know how injury prone he is, but Leeds are a team I am interested in keeping an eye on. So I'm glad that some of the player price reveals were for Leeds United. And then finally, some of you may have been waiting for this, but Manchester City had their player price reveals as well. And you can see in defence, Cancelo at 7 million. I think Cancelo pretty much walks into my side at that price. I was worried he might be a little bit more expensive. I was hoping he'd be a little bit cheaper. But I think Cancelo is one of the best options in your defence because of the potential for clean sheets and attacking returns. However, Carl Walker at 5 million, if he is in the starting 11 regularly for Manchester City, 5 million for a starting defensive player for Manchester City is incredible value. So if he turns out to be in the side, then I think Walker may actually make the cut as well. Then in midfield, we've got De Bruyne at 12 million, which is justified, of course, because of the way he ended last season and his potential for point returns. Sterling at 10 million is interesting to know because there's a chance he moves to Chelsea. I think for me, 10 million compared to some of the other players around might price him out of my interest for the beginning of the season. If he does stay at Man City, there's the likes of Foden and Mares at 8 million a pop. That's £2 million cheaper. And if Sterling does go, then Foden and Mahrez might be more nailed on. So I'm definitely interested in one of those two. You've got Gundogan at 7.5 million, surprisingly above Bernardo at 7 million. Again, Bernardo has the potential to leave Man City this season. And Grealish at 7 million as well. If Grealish hits the ground running, because sometimes players take time to adjust to Pep's style at Manchester City, but Grealish could be underpriced at 7 million if he does find his feet in his second season in Manchester. And then up front, the big news, the big reveal, Haaland, 11.5 million. And to be honest, that's the 0.5 million under the price I thought he'd be priced at, which makes me just that little bit more interested in him and makes him a bit more tempting. Now, it does depend on what Son and Salah's price is, but I may be close to changing my mind, which 
some of you will be very happy with because a lot of you have told me I think Haaland's too big a risk not to have in my side. And at 11.5 million, 0.5 million less than De Bruyne, Haaland may be in my thinking now. So that's a very interesting price to see. Anyway, guys, that is it for this video. So let me know in the comments down below which players you are interested in from the price reveals from Friday. Let's have a discussion in the comments down below. I'll try and to reply to as many of them as possible as we get very close to the launch of Fantasy Premier League for 2022-23. I'm excited. I hope you are too. If you want to stay up to date, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Also hit that like button to support the channel. And if you really want to know when my videos go live, that notification bell will send a notification to you when my videos drop. With all that being said, I've been JNO. This has been FPL Today. And remember, it's all about the game.